This is Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans with me, Cheryl Burke, an iHeartRadio podcast. Welcome back to Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans. Have you heard enough yet? I don't know, because you guys continue to listen. Anyway, thank you guys again for all of your support and love um, through this, you know, new process for me as a host of Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans, and now being a fan and watching the show from afar. Um, I've got lots to say, as you can imagine, and I've only gotten started, folks. Let's get straight into it, okay? We're going to recap week eight of the show right now. Yes, opening number. Yes, Billy Porter. I mean, this is what I wanted from Paula Abdul last week, and he gave me plenty. Oh my goodness. It's so great to see the pros dance again. I feel like it's been eons since we saw a pro number mixed with a walk downs, mixed with some pure, amazing entertainment celebrating the queen herself, Whitney Houston. What an amazing opening number. I still have chills all over my body. But it's such a feel-good song, high energy, loved every single minute of it. And yes, Billy Porter, I mean, I think you just sang live. Wow, very impressed. And I just love watching the pros dance. I could watch them dance all freaking day. Anyway, that is an opening number, Dancing with the Stars. Do this. Continue doing this every week, even if the pros are too tired. Just do it, Okay. Okay, first of all, I love when Billy Porter straight up just said, you know what I'm looking for? And he gave just three very strong words, especially when it comes to ballroom. Storytelling, connection, and intention. Now, Billy knows what he wants, doesn't he? I love it. I feel like he's going to be a great judge tonight. Okay, moving on. Let's go to couple number one, Harry and Riley, a Viennese waltz. Oh my God, this, I just love Whitney Houston. I love all of her music. I'm a huge fan. Listened to her since I was in grade school. Um, You know, it's so hard not to have emotion when you dance uh, to, you know, Whitney Houston, the queen herself. Okay, let's just start from the beginning of what I saw between these two people, especially in rehearsal. Why is he wearing tennis shoes in rehearsal? I don't know when that was shot. I'm sure it was the first day, but like there is, especially when you're Harry, you cannot get away with wearing tennis shoes. I don't care if you're doing interviews. I would be making my dance partner literally walk everywhere in the ballroom shoes that he's wearing for the week. I will never forget with Emmett Smith when he first put on Cuban heels, he almost rolled his ankle or he did roll his ankle. And I was like, there's none of that. You're going to be walking home to your car or whatever in Latin heels, in Cuban heels to get used to them. And it's the same thing with ballroom shoes. It doesn't matter if it's a Cuban heel or not. You know, just because the pro is wearing tennis shoes doesn't mean you can. And I hope, you know, I hope that changed throughout the rehearsal time. Um, You know, like basically the reason for this is because like he said, you know, he's not natural, you know, as far as dancing goes. So the more hours in the proper ballroom shoes and rehearsal, the more comfortable he'll feel. You know, not only did they do an out of studio package um, with the whole ballet lesson, which I love as an audience member, I don't love as, as a cast member, but as an audience member, I love when I see people go out of their uh, out of the studio space. But um, I'm not sure if this was shot a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure I follow Harry on uh, social media that he went to Chicago for an appearance for uh, the podcast queen herself, Alex Cooper. Call Her Daddy is her podcast. And um, I mean, she's my idol in the podcast world, that is. Um, but if that happened a long time ago, excuse me, my, my bad. But um, this is the best ballroom dance he's done that, you know, as far as having a great balance between content and tricks. Look, it is the cutest. When he was really genuinely smiling into that camera, I could tell when he's nervous when he licks his lips, you know? But I always say, because Viennese waltz, you don't have to stay in hold. You know, there's different positions. You can be in ballroom hold. You can be in shadow position, meaning the man's behind the girl. Always look and be aware of Riley. It's the best thing that you could possibly do. Because when you do have that, like, connection with her when you're aware that she is next to you, then, you know, that look of lost or that licking of the lips wouldn't happen. I think because it's week eight, look, he did amazing reverse turns. He got the footwork right, except there were no heel leads. And I blame the tennis shoes for that. 
in rehearsal because it takes, you need every single minute in rehearsal you can to try and basically put some muscle memory into your body. And you can't do that with tennis shoes or sneakers. You just can't. Sorry. Um, you know, I think more awareness with her when you were in shadow position, when doing like the whisks, when you were behind her towards the end, the tricks were flawless. I mean, we know you're an amazing partner for her. I would be careful with the bum. Your butt sticks out a little bit, but that's only because I find this with a lot of celebrity men. They think that they're going to step on our feet, but really everything is completely designed so that, you know, when the man steps forward, the woman steps back. So there's always this, um, especially for people with no dance experience, there's always this like fear you're going to step on our toes. Yeah, I would have liked to see more body contact and I would have liked to see his um, his dance shoes working to his favor and more heel leads. However, his best ballroom dance by far and such a huge improvement. I am really proud of Harry and Riley. I give them a seven. Couple number two, Jason and Daniela. Okay, so, you know, at the very top of the, you know, very beginning of this whole season, I always thought that, you know, Jason and Daniela would definitely be top three. And like I said, also uh, throughout the season and recaps is not how you start, it's how you finish. And I don't necessarily feel, I feel like, I don't know if it's psychological or if it's fatigue or both. Maybe it's not black and white. Maybe there's a gray. But I do feel like the uh, something is getting to Jason and it isn't clear as to what it is. Maybe it's because he started on such a high and maybe the lower scores and, and um, you know, feedback makes him feel a little bit defeated. I'm not saying that he can't take a... And constructive criticism. I'm just saying that sometimes mentally it does weigh on you. And this is week eight and it's all about survival of the fittest, not just physically, more mentally. So I hope, you know, Daniela is giving him praise and also giving him, you know, affirmations as far as like he's doing such a great job. I now see what the judges are saying when they say they want more fire because you know, there's so much fluidity and this is harder to actually be able to demonstrate when you're learning ballroom. Normally, you know, celebrities who have never danced before have zero fluidity. It's like we have to kind of mask it by as women pros, like we would have to kind of manipulate what we see at home, meaning like maybe instead of you know, the fluidity from foot to foot, it's like we need to add a few hip rolls or a few hip gyrations when it comes to samba. But samba is all about party. It's a party dance. It's a fun dance. And it the bounce is what really matters. In samba, we count one, a two, a one, a two. You know, we have that kind of bounce that all happens from the legs, feet, and ankles. And I was, it was a little bit lacking. I also know that Samba is one of, I would say, depending on who you're dancing with and depending on how you teach the Samba, you know, it's, it's all about rhythm. And I know that Jason has a lot of rhythm, but I also know how hard that music is to dance a Samba to. When you say Whitney Houston, you don't think Samba. You think Viennese waltzes, you think rumbas, you think contemporaries, you don't think Samba. And because it wasn't that like, you know, Brazil type, you know, Magdalena type music. It didn't have a lot of bongos. It was most likely really challenging for Daniela to come up with choreography. However, it was super musical. But knowing a little bit now of, you know, what he's been lacking, I think that's what they mean by energy. But what I wish the judges would actually say is what he's doing as far as the transitions go and how flawless and fluid the transitions are. I wish they would also give him that note that he has done something that is very rarely seen as a celebrity contestant on the show. He has messed up a few times. I saw in the beginning, I thought that was really clever of Daniela that walked down the stairs. I always hate stairs for this reason because it's either we run up or run down but the way they did it was pretty clever it's never been done before so good on Daniela I mean the man is I think they're putting him up on a pedestal in a way as far as judging him and judging him against himself it's almost like uh it's like it's not doing him any good because he started out so strong like you want that ease with those like 
quicker dances, like the jive or like the quick step, because that ease and that fluidity comes across as super impressive. But when you have a song that's super fluid, you need to add your own dynamics when it comes to samba and when it comes to making your own accents, or maybe when it comes to maybe working with the band to add in a few accents. Because for me, it was a little too um, monotone for the samba. But again, you got to dance to whatever music you're being given. However, you can manipulate the music a little bit. You can't change the lyrics, but you can add a few accents. And I don't know if Daniela was, um, or if she, because, you know, Daniela has only been on a few seasons, so I'm not sure if she actually talked to Ray Chu or not. However, I mean, it, it, it was solid. I mean, I love the samba roles. It was just a little too fluid, and I think it got in his head when he made that first mess up, and then he messed up again towards the middle and then I felt like he gave up. Unfortunately, though I still love them and I'm still rooting for Jason and Daniela, but I give them an eight. Couple number three, Allison and Sasha dancing a contemporary. First of all, Allison just looks gorgeous. And I believe that she is the definition of what this competition is about. As I said last week, you know, it's a contemporary routine. As you guys know, I am not the best judge with contemporary, but I am a dancer. Regardless, we all know that. Okay, so because it's a contemporary and because there's still movement within the contemporary genre, she, you know, I'm going to be a little bit harder because it's hard. I can't judge the technical side of it other than an extension of an arm. You know, look, the arms were just thrown out and it wasn't, it didn't, I wish she would have just continued with her head looking and looking towards her her hand and her fingertips, like really breathing from the rib cage, extending the arm and not just throwing it with keeping and keeping her focus just right at the camera. I, there were some brilliant moments like that, you know, handstand that she didn't use hands for. She used Sasha's body for, you know, there's certain moments that, you know, I really felt that emotion and I don't think she would have been able to do this week one. Look, Allison has zero dance experience, but I feel like I would go if as an audience member, I would go in and out as far as emotion goes. Like I knew there were there were times I think when she didn't feel as connected to it was when the dancing started. And then the tricks, of course, was so good, like that death drop and then her legs coming off the floor. I hope Sasha's back is okay, not because of Allison, just because that is really hard. Um, but she is definitely developing so much um, muscle and dance muscle, meaning like her core was pretty activated because you wouldn't have been able to do that without that being activated. There were some brilliant moments. It just lacked consistency throughout. I give Allison and Sasha a seven. Okay, so as you guys know, I... Um, definitely watch this and I try and watch it prior to the judges remarks and this is what I did for since the beginning right I would say 99.9% of the time I'm basically commenting and then giving my score prior to the judges comments and the judges scores first of all let me just talk about Billy Porter he's amazing like (laughs) this guy is doesn't shy away even with the booze Like, we need more of Billy. We need more of at least, you know, at least he was giving some constructive criticism, whether it's point the toes or point the biscuits. Regardless, it is constructive. Um, Now, as far as the judges scoring goes, like I, I would say I gave constructive criticism just now as well. And though my score was the lowest one out of the four, you know, you can't just praise and not give constructive criticism and then give eights. Okay. It is so important. It's so um, frustrating because I know these dancers work so hard and we want, so when they go in for their, you know, confessionals or when they go in for their heart to hearts, when what you see at the top of each package is basically the next day. And then it's the camera crew and the couple in the actual dance studio. And before they even teach the first steps of the next challenge or the next dance, they have to talk about you know, last night and the scoring and the dance. And there's nothing that they can say other than every judge, basically, other than Billy gave um, praise and then they got eight. So like, what can they do better? Hopefully someone is listening to this, maybe Allison and Sasha, I highly doubt it with this busy schedule that they have. But, you know, 
it's kind of like, okay, they've hit a roadblock now. Like, what, what are they supposed to work on for next week? Anyway, I don't understand it. Um, I wish that at least, you know, they would plan this out, whether it was going to be all just praise, then the scores have to kind of match that, which to me, it looked like they were going to get all nines. Um, anyway, that's all I got to say, guys. I just wanted to remind people and all for my new listeners as well that I, I do the, these remarks and I do my score prior to any judges' comments or scores. Um, all right, let me watch the next couple. Okay, couple number four, Sochi and Val. I would say that was a freaking solid performance. I mean, I don't know if Val worked with Raichu, but I, I don't. I think this was like a remix of... Um, with somebody who loves me or whatever the song's called, or I want to dance with somebody, sorry. I, I mean, that is a pretty classic tango. The only thing is that I wish there was more aggression and attack in her face, Not, nothing else. Like I know I say I hate rehearsing facial expressions and though Val's face as well was, was very happy. I mean, look, we're celebrating Whitney Houston. They did, and then, I mean, if I were to look from the neck down, it was solid super classic. Now that is more impressive than any hip hop routine or any contemporary or jazz routine. I mean, because you know why? This is Dancing with the Stars. It's about learning how to ballroom and knowing that Sochi has never ballroom danced before. I mean, she, I would say so far tonight, you know, I would say she's the one to look out for. I, I really do. I mean, that was a solid freaking tango. There was body contact. There there were, there were wasn't so much rise and fall. I mean, there was a little bit uh, rise and fall here and there, but she had heel leads. It was sharp. There was a tack. There was just this, this looked so easy, right? And it's not easy, as you guys know. There was zero struggle. She was enjoying herself. Val was enjoying. I mean, they're, they're, they've turned into a real solid couple. And couple meaning like they they both complement each other. You know, I think that, you know, Val didn't outdance her. You know, Sochi was just at ease. She knew that she was hitting everything and there was no panic of anything. There, she wasn't trying too hard, though she was trying hard, believe me. But there was a sense of calmness and ease and confidence about this performance tonight and how they executed it. I would have liked more fire and intensity like she had kind of in that Pasa Doble. But considering, you know, you are dancing to a song and that song isn't necessarily a classic tango song, I thought they did a solid performance. And because of me wanting more intensity in the face and more passion, I give Sochi and Val a nine, but a 9.9. .9. Another thing I want to say about Sochi, you know, thank you for opening up and being vulnerable in your package. That really, you know, makes me feel like, you know, I know you and I'm a friend. And I think as an audience member and fan, it's important to discuss, you know, why you feel like a failure when you, I, I heard you say you felt like a failure when you were on the floor in rehearsals and and um, how you twisted your ankle, like all of it. This is part of this journey of Dancing with the Stars. It's not all about the glitz and glam and going up going on the up and up like there are going to be moments and roadblocks and feelings of failure but know that there is no growth and there is no success without it so keep on being you girl and just keep shining couple number five barry and pita okay i hear his frustration i mean like i said you know i have always believed that you know barry first of all has the people at home voting for him obviously However, I feel like he peaked too soon, almost kind of like Jason, I would say. You know, his cha-cha was just in the beginning, I think it was the premiere dance, was so solid and so strong. But let's not forget he had longer than just a few days to learn this dance. I think with Barry, repetition is key. And there's only so many times you can repeat something um, when you only have four or five days to put it together. Now, as far as, you know, I, I'm not so sure if I liked where the package was going. Like I, I, you know, if Len Goodman was here, he wouldn't have expected it to be sexy or raunchy. He would have wanted a classic rumba, which I feel like they did. But then like leading up to it, I just feel like the package and what he actually executed didn't match. I wish they went more on the, okay, instead of me being this sex bomb, why don't we take on a classic cool rumba, especially with this song. The song doesn't call, even if I dance to it with like, Oh, William Levy, 
I wouldn't have done a very sexy, sexy rumba. It would have called for more of a sensual and um, more of a beautiful rumba, right? Than all about the hips. But um, okay, so that is what it is. That has nothing to do with them so much as the producers. I love his wife. His wife is the cutest. Um, I thought there were great moments with Barry. Like, Allison can take a note from Barry when it comes to his arm extension. Like, that's what I mean. Like, when Barry throws an arm up, he's con- he's using, he's not just throwing the arm up and not using his whole body to throw the arm up. His rib cage is expanding and he really, and Harry can look at this too. Coming from Barry, he is definitely commanding the room. Rumba, this is what I mean by Rumba is the hardest dance as far as the Latin dances, I believe. Maybe not so much for Jason and Daniela because, you know, what they did was pretty amazing when it comes to rumba because I know Daniela said it was samba. It just depends on the person you have. But I've always found it very challenging to choreograph rumbas for men because it's always male celebrities, that is, because it's always so hard. It's like less sometimes isn't more as far as steps go. Now, they did about, I would say, a solid six different opening outs, which is a very technical step in the rumba. His elbows went down, so there was no frame. I saw Peta almost, as much as Peta wanted to settle back, she had zero support from Barry. Barry needed to continue, though they, frame isn't just happening in ballroom numbers or standard dances or ballroom dances. Frame also happens in Latin dances, and he needed to create this frame and this spatial awareness between the elbow and the rib cage. However, it just, it fell down in order to create power for the woman to move from foot to foot. Now, he also didn't shift his full weight onto that side step, onto his left, and then onto his right. His body should have shifted onto that leg going the opposite way of Peta. And so because there were so many of them, you know, technically it was wrong. It wasn't right by any means, like not, not nothing about it was. And so when you put so much of basic steps as far as rumba goes, which is needed, then you gotta be able to execute it right. And unfortunately that didn't happen, but there were beautiful and brilliant moments. He definitely, I wish they would have connected more as far as using each other, um, eye contact and creating more of that instead of um, dancing outwards. Like the rumba, it is definitely, more of a woman's dance and you had the man has to present the woman and you can't do that when you don't look at each other you need to connect I feel like also his facial expressions I don't know if he was trying to be seductive with his facial expressions but it just didn't work like for me when I listen to this music it puts a serene smile on my face and I wish that would have come across more I feel like he's losing that momentum and that spark a little I give Barry and Pita a seven Couple number six, Charity and Artem. Oh, wow. She looks gorgeous tonight. I mean, props to wardrobe, makeup, the band. You guys are just so amazing. You guys are at the top of your game. That encrusted bodysuit. You know me. If anyone's listening from wardrobe, good on you. You know me. I like all my rhinestones. I like all my dresses covered and shoes covered in rhinestones. And you did it. (laughs) Anyway. Okay. Let's move on. So, Okay, I think what, I don't know if they are understanding what the judges mean by power. And I'm not sure if the judges are actually being able to interpret it the right way with just so little time being able to judge. I think what they're meaning is not just so much energy from like your legs and feet, though I know, yes, that is a part of it. Absolutely. But I believe because Artem is giving that to her, and this is where I think the pro male dancers have it a lot easier, is because they're feeding this energy to the woman, um, to their celebrity, uh, to the celebrity women. Now, as far as the pro uh, female dancers, it's like you, you can't fake it. Like we can't dance around our male um, celebrities when it comes to stuff like that, when it comes to like the Viennese waltz and the power from the legs, like something that I've been asking Sasha to do a little bit with Allison, right? It, it, it comes from the male, the leading man in the partnership, okay? And I think with that, yes, yeah, sometimes Artem can give a little too much power, but that's not what ha- what happened tonight. Now, in general, I think what, what they mean is they want more emotional um, dynamics, and that's what she did. I mean, she definitely didn't perform to the camera. So good on you, Charity. Like, I, f- I did feel emotion. But for me, 
the dancing part, like, okay, so when a woman, when you are the picture, not the frame, okay, normally the man is the frame and the woman is the picture. You can't be holding on to the bicep, like her left hand. She needed to like go right underneath that bicep, like with, I wish you guys could see me, but like as if, you know, you're holding an apple, right? You got to like kind of, uh, put th- that hand right underneath the man, the man's bicep, and then the pinky finger and ring finger needs to be afloat, like it needs to be off the bicep. So there's a sense of ease. She, I felt like she was gripping onto Artem for dear life when it comes to that because of Artem's power through his legs. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more extension from Charity from the rib cage up towards the balcony. There was a moment where, you know, they were doing reverse turns and then they were doing, you know, run arounds each other and she was looking the wrong way. I feel like her energy was great, except it could have been more. And maybe this is what the judges mean, that she needed to dance her upper body Though she doesn't need to look up there, but her upper body, that energy, that light from your heart needs to go up towards the balconies, up to the ceiling. Okay, so her ex- her head needs to be an extension of that. So, sorry, I'm doing that as I'm trying to like put this into words. It's really difficult. Um, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But for week eight and for the potential I know that Charity has, it could have been better. I feel like... There were just moments of, there wasn't enough as far as extension goes. I feel like it was, it looked not too easy because it wasn't easy. It just didn't look finished. I feel like it, they didn't work on the upper half of the body. And that was what was really lacking for me was that her steps were there. Her steps were intact. This music was beautiful. I danced to this music, I think, with Terrell Owens. We did a Viennese waltz because there's a lot of repetition with steps. I always love when I get the Viennese waltz because it, the steps in itself is really easy, especially for a male celebrity and a woman celebrity. But then it gives more room and more time to work on the detail. And I feel like that was lacking. Um, I just know Charity has so much more to give. And I hope that she doesn't get lost in the shuffle and go home tonight. I give Charity and Artem an eight. Last couple of round one, Ariana and Pasha dancing at Pasa Doble. Okay, so I thought the package was a week late. I wish that they would have talked about this more last week because that's when that happened. Um, Look, let's get to the dancing. The Pasa Doble, okay, Pasha looks amazing. (laughs) You know, I'm a fan of Pasha. I loved his knee spins and walks and everything. And yes, the Pasa Doble is the man's dance. It is. Okay, so it is what it is. Now, I wish there was more aggression. There needs to be, you know, the woman plays the cape and plays also the flamenco, you know, parts. And I wish there was more attack, kind of similar to what she was able to display week one in that tango. She had so much fire and I feel like that was missing. I feel like, I don't know if it was the choreography. I don't think it was the choreography. I think that the dynamic, everything was being, everything was executed the same energy. I I wish there was more soft moments. And then there, I wish there was more like, you know, in Paso Doble, you'll hear us pro dancers go like, ha! you know, like <laughs> we'll make sound effects because with the sound effects that we, that we project out loud through our mouths, it actually also projects through our body language. I felt like it was too soft, but there was great shaping. There was great um, execution of basic steps like chasse capes. I wish that there was more um, dynamics. I wish there was a flamenco section a little bit that was just all involved with the like, you guys would understand this, the stomping, but it's not really stomping. But, you know, all it is is like body weight being pushed down into the floor. I wish there was more of the light and the shade and then also the quickness and then the softness and the love and the hate. I wish there was a little bit more attack. I feel like it was a little too careful, but I don't think, it, again, I don't think Pasa Doble when I, when you say Whitney Houston, I just don't. But yes, it was a great song. I, it almost would have been a better song for like Sochi and Val to do a tango to. Um, but look, it was solid and 
you know, she really, first of all, her foot placement is impeccable. I just know, again, I know that there is more. I wish she would have been more intense. I wish her eyes were like more laser focused. I wish she was more aggressive. I wish she would just like would push Pasha's chest and like use that energy from her arms into her legs and feet. Like I danced a Paso Tango with Pasha last season when we did like a bumper, I think it was, to um, Gwen Stefani's song. And I mean, this man is a great leader. He really is. I just feel like it is so detailed. The pasta doble is so detailed. And then there's a fine line of being hectic versus um, being too monotone. I wish I would have seen more hectic. Not so much hectic as far as like losing control, but I wish I would have seen more dynamic is what I'm trying to say. I give Ariana and Pasha a nine. Okay, here we are. These are the dance-offs. Um, I, I actually like these dance-offs because, yes, you know, like Derek said in the package, you could compare the two couples. However, these two cup people, these two couples are not uh, paired well, I believe. I think it should have been Harry and Riley versus Barry and Peta. That would have been more fair, right? Anyone? Crickets? Hello, anyone? Um Look, obviously, Allison and Sasha, for me, was the clear winner. Of course, you know, I know, <laughs> look, they both have never done the rumba before. Rumba is hard, but it's not as hard if you're the woman celebrity, just saying. However, with these uneven pairing, I wouldn't say pairings, because I would just say that these two couples, I, I, I just didn't think it was fair. Um, I feel, I believe Barry's been in the bottom more than Allison. Uh, I think Allison and um, Jason would have been more of a competition. Poor Barry now has to go up against Jason. Anyway, there was more content with Allison and Sasha, there was more rumba basic and more um, rumba technique demonstrated. Was it uh, 10? No. But if we're comparing the two, I definitely would prefer, since the challenge is a rumba, not to, uh, the challenge isn't to do tricks. I my, The couple for me obviously goes to Allison and Sasha. <laughs> I'm just Googling because... Jason and Daniela versus Barry and Pita Salsa. I couldn't take my eyes off of Barry. I mean, they were right. Everyone was saying it in the package. You can't take your eyes off of Barry, especially when he, when Pita or he rips his own shirt off. I cannot. And I have to say, this is the type, see, I knew it. Barry is better in Latin. He just is in the Latin dance, except for the rumba and the pasta doble. But the cha-cha, the salsa, the upbeat, fun dances, like, oh my God, he's such a showman. Like, he really is. And good on him for the confidence of just ripping his shirt off. Yes, Barry. <laughs> Gosh, you know, you better work with that shirt off. Okay, now I didn't really get to see Jason as much because I was just so entertained by uh, Barry and Peta. But I have to say the moments I did see Jason and Daniela dance, they had more content. I saw a lot of repetition with Barry and Peta, though salsa is a lot of repetition. But the musicality on both of them, I mean, they were solid. I still think... Barry should have been with Allison. Um, I think it's just a different level, a completely different level, right? I mean, sorry, yeah. No, Barry should have been with Harry, my bad, and Allison should have been with Jason. Um, but as far as if this is this is a dance-off, um, the quality of movement, the intricate uh, steps, salsa is fast, salsa... You have to be able to do transitions into the next step flawlessly. And um, Jason and Daniela did that. So I give this dance off, though I want to give it to Barry so bad. Uh, I give it to Jason and Daniela. I love them both, though. Okay, last couple of this dance off. Sochi and Val and Charity and Artem. Wow. that Now, this is a real dance off. You've got two male pros dancing against you know, dancing with two celebrity women, and now you can really compare. Gosh, I wish they would do this with all the couples. How amazing would that be? That's a real dance competition, you guys. There's about like, in a real competition, you'll have up to 12 couples on the floor, but maybe instead of 12, they could just split it in the beginning of the season and do six and six. I mean, you really can see the difference. 
I have to say right away, I'm just going to say, I give it to Charity and Artem. There's a sense of maturity and um, a sense of sharpness and precision when it comes to Charity and Artem. And I know that they both have done the cha-cha before, but, you know, back in the day. And then also, obviously, Charity did this with Ezra. And you know, I have to say that Charity really looked like she was having fun. I mean, it wasn't just fun. It was like she was singing along. She looked like she wasn't insecure about her next step. She, um, you know, she even looked, she looked just as good as Artem at times. I mean, obviously, I don't mean it that like that. Like, she, obviously, Artem is a pro. But what I'm saying is that I never have seen so much fun chemistry between the two. Charity wasn't into the camera, but her leg action. I don't think it was just the fringe pants. I think it was really just the technique and the foot placement. You know, both of these male pros, both Val and Artem, are very detailed. And um, to the point where even the kicks, you know, they, they realize that they've got celebrity women where... These, these girls could definitely work on the detail. They don't need to just memorize the steps. It's about the detail. And I have to say, I give it to Charity, though it was hard. But I, honestly, my eyes were to Charity. So congratulations on my behalf, that is. Let's see who's going home. Oh, I hate that Barry is gone. I actually, you know, I, I said it like a few weeks ago. I thought, mark my words, I said he was going to make the final. I, I I don't know. I think in a way, because it is so physically demanding just for Barry personally, I think, you know, he is really a winner. I mean, if anything, you know, this competition is so intense. And I think it's even more intense from even when Donnie Osmond did it back in, I think, season 16 or something like that. The level of dance has gone up tremendously. And, you know, you can't just get away with, you know, gimmicks or any of it. Like, you really need to put in the content and you really need time and you need the energy as well. For what Barry did and accomplished, I mean, good on him. I honestly am so proud of PETA. I saw that PETA got emotional a little bit at the end. And, you know, this is week eight. I mean, basically, I think next week, is that the semifinals? I believe it is. Or the quarterfinals. I don't know. Either way, you're, you know, you you really won. You won America's hearts. And I hope Barry and his wife just continue dancing or start dancing, whatever it is. And I just want to say to PETA, you did such a spectacular job this season. I'm sure it, it wasn't easy in so many different ways. However, you really brought out the best in Barry and you guys just shined on the dance floor together, honestly, and especially you, Peta, because, you know, not any pro woman pro could have done what you did, only an experienced one. So that says a lot about you. Um, congratulations to the two of you and I will see you and hear from you hopefully soon. Come on the pod, the two of you, or just PETA. Um, I want to catch up with my girl um, and Barry. I would love to meet you via Zoom and on Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans. But um, anyway, thank you guys again for all of your love and support. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's free. Continue all the support. And I read all of your comments, both on Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans Instagram, as well as mine. Thank you for all of all of the love and support, especially, you know, through these hard, uncomfortable conversations um, that we've had lately. And we've got Leah Remini, my girl, my better half, coming on the podcast, two-parter. Stay tuned. Until next time. Love you guys. Bye. Make sure you guys follow us at Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans on our Instagram handle and make sure you comment. Let me know who you want me to interview. What do you all think? Let me know.